Hello everyone, it's me, Aaron, Professor Thorgy, your guide to all things geeky, and welcome to another Comic Class Minisode. That's right, the Comic Class Minisodes are where I come in here and just give you a quick little summary of a book that I really want everybody to go out there and check out, or it's when I come in here and give you a quick little review of a major book that just hit the stands that everyone is going to end up talking about. Today, it's the latter. Yes, for the past couple of months, I've been talking about the situation over at Marvel between the X-Men and the Inhumans and all the weird legal rights that are going on back and forth and what the future might hold for the X-Men and it's all been leading to an event called Inhumans vs. X-Men. Now, I'm not going to come in here and sum up for you guys this entire crazy backstory going into this book because in all honesty, if you're watching my channel at this point, you probably already know it, and if you don't know it, then a card should be popping up right about now that will take you to a video in which I laid out everything that's been going on between the Inhumans versus the X-Men. Okay, so this issue finally came out. And it came out. Okay, I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. I don't exactly know how I feel about this issue just yet. A lot of people asked me to talk about issue zero that came out, and I didn't want to talk about issue zero because issue zero wasn't issue zero. It was basically just summing up every single thing that had gone on. It told us what Beast had been doing over the past eight months in which he had been working with the Inhumans to try and solve the problem of the Terrigen Mist killing the X-Men. And it did a decent job of that, I gotta admit. It did what it was supposed to do. It let us know exactly where everybody stood and what this was all about. So kudos to you on putting out an issue zero. But we are now in issue one. This is when the actual war begins between the Inhumans and the X-Men. And I gotta say, first thing that I will say about this issue is that it's double the size of a normal issue. I read this and I actually went, you know what? This does feel like it actually was worth paying a little bit more than the normal price of a comic. I always come in here and I give Marvel a hard time because they charge insane prices for their books. But I read this one and I went, you know what, there is so much in this issue, I would feel okay paying an extra dollar for it. Then I flipped to the cover and saw it was an extra two dollars. So screw you again, Marvel! But okay, I'm delaying talking about this issue simply because, as I said, I still don't know how I feel about this issue because, listen, let's be totally honest. You guys know me. You know I think this whole idea of the X-Men dying off because of a cloud is stupid. And I think that this is all coming from the weird legal battle that Disney is having with Fox over the movie rights to the X-Men and nobody just wanting to act like adults. And you guys know that that drives me nuts. So no matter how I feel about this book, that is always going to be in the back of my mind. That will never go away. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, and we just all agree that the idea of a cloud going around that kills mutants while creating the Marvel-owned version of mutants is stupid, let's go ahead and talk about this issue. Now, this issue opens up with the Beast bringing kind of the head representatives of every faction of the X-Men all together. He's got Emma Frost and Magneto there. They've been leading the darker side of the X-Men. He's got Storm there. She's been saving all the X-Men trying to run the school, and she's holding all the students in limbo, which, yeah, it kind of seems weird to me that they sent the X-Men to hell, and that's the only way that they could stay safe. I feel like there's some weird business metaphor going on there that I can't quite pick up on, but... And then he also brings in Rogue, and Rogue is with the Avengers and their Unity Squad, which is all about bringing people together, so she's there to represent kind of the superhero side of the mutants. And he's also got Forge there, because they need a big tech guy in there. So he's brought all these different groups together. Oh, he's also got his younger version there. Uh, it's weird that if I have one beast in a room, I forget that the other beast is there. But he also brings the other beast there because he's the representative for the time-displaced X-Men from the past. Okay, holy cow, the whole concept of the X-Men is really confusing right now at Marvel. Anyway, didn't really sink in until I said it. Oh wait, there was another time-displaced X-Men. He's got Old Man Logan from the future. Dear God, Marvel! Okay, Beast, Beast, Emma Frost, Rogue, Magneto, Forge, Storm. 
Old Man Logan, am I forgetting anybody? It's those eight people. He's brought them all together, and he tells them, listen, after Scott Summers destroyed one of the Terrigen Clouds, we still had the other Terrigen Cloud there, and it's been slowly getting smaller. And the reason it's getting smaller is because it's slowly dispersing throughout the atmosphere. That means that the poisonous gas that is part of the Terrigen Mist is slowly just going to become part of the environment. It's going to become part of the air all over the planet, meaning that within two weeks, we only have two weeks left. Within those two weeks, the Earth will be uninhabitable to mutants, which means we can either lay down and die, or just pack up all the mutants we can find, load them into a ship, and leave the planet. Now, I just want to bring something up. When I was going on my rant about the end of Death of X, and this whole idea that Cyclops destroyed one of the Terrigen Clouds, I said that the first thing that makes that incredibly stupid is that I've been reading the Inhuman books from the beginning, there was only one Terrigen Cloud to begin with. They just created a second Terrigen Cloud because they needed something for Cyclops to do that would tick off the Inhumans. It was just something they created solely for that storyline. It was not there to begin with, meaning none of this was thought out. I went back and checked just to make sure that I wasn't full of crap. Very first page of the first issue of the Inhumans book after it came out, after the Terrigen Mist was released, it goes, here's a map of the one single Terrigen cloud going across the planet. So, right away, made me ticked off about the whole Terrigen cloud thing all over again. But after he tells them this, pretty much everyone there just goes, we are not going to let that happen. We are not going to let the mutants die off or be forced to leave their home planet because of the Inhumans, when all we can do is just get rid of this cloud. And here is my big problem with this issue. I actually think that a lot of stuff in this issue is done well. I think that they raise the tension pretty well. I think that the way that they are setting up how the X-Men are going to go up against the Inhumans is actually done pretty well. Like they have the scenes that are taking place in the past and these scenes that are taking place in the present as you see the X-Men's plan being executed. And I actually think that that works pretty well to raise the tension and kind of get you going, oh my gosh, what's going to happen next? However, it becomes clear immediately they are really trying to get you to root against the X-Men because the X-Men they really are coming off like, we have made plans to take down the Inhumans. It's time that we strike at them. It's time that we claim the first victory. It's time that we go in there and win this war. And it really is like, oh my gosh, this is how stories about villain taking on heroes begin. Like, if you were placed every X-Men in this room with the Sinister Six, and they were talking about Spider-Man, and you kept all the dialogue the same, and be like, yeah, I believe it. I believe that's exactly how they would talk about this situation. They are really trying to make the X-Men talk like supervillains about we have to go in there and take these people down. These poor, innocent inhumans who've just been sitting over there doing nothing. It's time that we go in there and destroy them. That is the tone that they are trying to give the X-Men. And that infuriates me because, again, this is not an even argument. This is not the X-Men who have just been pushed too far and is like, all right, screw it, we're gonna take on the Inhumans who aren't doing anything. No, the gas is killing them. It's killing them, and if you get rid of it, it does nothing to the Inhumans. Literally, it does nothing to the Inhumans. This is not an even argument. However, there came a moment during their arguments, when they put everything to a vote, in which I almost wanted to put the book down and applaud. During this argument, when it came time for them to decide what they were going to do, they decided to put everything to a vote, and everybody gave their reason for voting the way that they did. And say, you know, Emma Frost, Magneto, that's obvious. They're going to go for attacking the Inhumans. We all understand why they're going to feel that way. Cool. Rogue decided to not attack the Inhumans because she said she did not want a fight, I can understand that, however, it is a little bit odd seeing as how for the past two years over in Uncanny Avengers, she has been very anti-Inhumans and she's also dying off the Impox, so I could see her going either way on that. However, I absolutely loved Forge's answer. Forge just abstained. He just said, listen, I ain't voting either way because 
yes, I want to save the mutants. I want to see if my machine to save the mutants works. But at the same time, I've lived in space before. I can do it again. Whatever. I absolutely love that because someone in here finally stepped forward and just went, Listen, we're the X-Men. We've had a ton of crazy storylines before. We can get through this one again. It's gonna be fine. I felt like that was a character in this book almost turning to the audience and going, Guys, it'll be fine. I know it's weird to imagine that, but it did give me some reassurance. But that's not the thing that made me want to applaud. The thing that made me want to applaud was Old Man Logan. Old Man Logan finally freaking said what everyone has been saying about this from day one. I have mentioned numerous times, this is not an even argument. Mutants are dying, get rid of the cloud, and humans just don't get their powers. He comes in and goes, if we get rid of the cloud, then a bunch of people who never even knew they had powers keep living their lives perfectly normal. This is not up for debate. The moment he said that, I went, now I can read this book. Someone finally said the thing that they have been avoiding saying this entire time, which is that this is not an even argument. This is not even sides on this debate. Oh my gosh, but if the Terrigen Cloud goes away, there won't be more Inhumans. So that's their whole culture going away. They have proven in the Inhumans book there are more Terrigen Crystals out there. Instead of building devices to just track the Terrigen Cloud, how about you get rid of the Cloud and build devices to track the Terrigen Crystals? They're somewhere on the planet. You can find them. This is not up for debate. Mutants are dying. Inhumans just don't get their powers, even though they never even knew they had powers to begin with. For the two or three of you out there who actually might be on the Inhuman side in this argument, let me put it to you like this. Let's compare it to money. You know when you put an old jacket on and then you reach into the pocket and you find a crisp $10 bill in there that you didn't even know you had and you're like, all right, awesome, yeah, I had no idea I had this. Now I got something special. That's a good feeling, isn't it? Now imagine if that $10 wasn't there. You would never have known at all. Now imagine if taking that $10 away so that you never even knew you had those $10 kept another person from going bankrupt and losing every single ounce of cash that they had. I think you would agree it's worth losing that 10 bucks that you never even knew you had. So I was pretty opposed to this book as I was reading it because it was like, ah oh man, they're setting up the mutants to be the villains and all this. This is just complete crap. But then when Wolverine said that, I was like, yeah, someone finally made the argument. Good. It's hard for me to look at the Inhumans as villains in this storyline when you finally address the giant Terrigen elephant in the room. And after that, it shows the X-Men setting up their plans to take down every single member of the Inhuman royal family. You see Jean Grey taking on Karnak, and it's actually kind of awesome what she does. She doesn't even throw a punch. It's so amazing that moment in which Karnak realizes Wait a minute, we've been talking like this before. This is deja vu. Have we had this conversation? It goes, yeah, we've been talking for the past six hours, repeating this one conversation over and over again. And then Karnak sees himself just trapped in an endless cycle in her mind. And he's just like, I am going to break out of this. And I was like, oh, that's going to be a fight. That's going to be pretty cool to watch. As I said, I do not want to see the Inhumans take on the X-Men. I don't want to see it happen, but if it is going to happen, get me excited for it. That kind of got me excited for it. And then the way that Emma Frost took down Black Bolt. Listen, Black Bolt is as strong as Thor. A punch from Diamond to the throat probably wouldn't cause him to lose his voice. I will admit that. But tricking him into screaming at Dazzler so she absorbed all his sound and turned it into power that was brilliant. I really gotta hand it to Charles Soule. That was a smart way to take down Black Bolt. And I really don't want anything to happen to Lockjaw. I know he's just a dog, but he's always been my favorite member of the Inhumans. I was like, oh, he's just a dog. He doesn't have any bone in this fight. He does not want to go in there and mess up the X-Men. He's just a poor innocent dog. The fact that they got Phantom X just to kind of dope him up and put him to sleep for a couple hours, I was like, you know what? You found a way to take down Lockjaw without making me upset. Pretty good job there. And as I said, I know 
that Marvel is trying to get me to root against the X-Men. They're trying to make me go, oh my gosh, they're taking down the Inhumans one step at a time. As I said, in any other crossover story, this is what the villains do. The villains, in the very first issue, they take down the heroes, and then the heroes have to build themselves up. So I'm sure that later on, I'm going to be ticked about all the stuff I'm saying right now. However, for so long, Marvel has been telling us, you love those Inhumans, right? Ah, oh, who needs the X-Men? Push the X-Men aside. The Inhumans, they're the new X-Men, yeah. It's kind of like that scene from The Simpsons, where Homer gets kicked out of his house, and he moves into the treehouse, and he goes insane, and just takes a potted plant, puts Marge's face on, and goes, listen, this is your new mother now. Good news, Lisa. I don't need your mother anymore. I've created a replacement that's superior to her in almost every way. Dad, that's just a plant. Lisa, you will respect your new mother. Now give her a kiss. So yes, I know that Marvel wanted me to look at this and go, oh, those poor inhumans being taken down by those dreadful X-Men. But I'm sorry, the X-Men are such beloved characters, and for the past two years, you have forced us to watch them go through the worst situation imaginable for them and for the X-Men that's saying something, all so that the Inhumans can be in the spotlight when no one was really asking for them to be in the spotlight. So I know you want me to look at them as the villains, but man was I cheering them on throughout all this. So yes, I know that as this story goes along, the Inhumans are going to rise back up, take on the X-Men, probably even kill a couple of the X-Men, and I will be very upset about that. I will be very miffed. I know that several things are going to happen throughout the course of this storyline that will have me very angry at you, Marvel. However, for one glorious issue, it just felt good to see the X-Men winning for once. So, as I said, I don't really know how to feel about this issue because Man, did it feel good to see the X-Men finally taking on the Inhumans and just telling them to shut up. But at the same time, I know that's not what this is. I know that's not what Marvel wanted me to feel this was. Marvel wanted me to see the X-Men as a threat. It's very obvious based on the way that they set this up. And I know that as the story goes along, they're going to want me to root for the Inhumans as they rise back up. But for this one issue, I had a pretty good time seeing Black Bolt get punched in the face. Although I will say before I fully wrap up, just speaking about the characterization of the X-Men, as I mentioned, they are definitely trying to make them look like villains, and one of the things that made them look like a villain to me was when Storm attacked Beast. Yeah, I, listen, Storm is a mama bear. Storm is someone who if you mess with her kids, meaning any of the students there, she doesn't care who you are, she will attack you. However, I can't see her doing that to Beast. She still loves every other mutant out there. She loves all of her friends. So even if it's like, this is to save my people, I can't see her attacking Beast. That, yeah, that was one of the big moments in here where I had to point out and go, even if I am happy to see the X-Men fighting back, this is something that is ticking me off right now. As I said, I'm probably gonna get ticked off at many things in the future. However, as for right now, that is a big thing that I have to point at. I thought that that was poor characterization on her part. It just seemed like something that they had to do in order to get them to all start fighting right now. Plus, he was on his way to tell the Inhumans about this, not necessarily the X-Men trying to attack, but about the whole Terrigen Mist going to kill all the mutants within two weeks. I have a really, really crappy feeling like all of this is going to end with Beast waking up, getting in touch with the Inhumans, telling them about, and then going, oh, why didn't you just tell us in the first place? Oh, well, we'll work with you now. We'll try and help you out. Why did you have to attack us? We were the nice guys who were gonna be on your side the whole time. One of my biggest complaints when it comes to writing characters is when characters fight each other or go against each other simply because they didn't talk. And that's what this story did at the end. It kept them from coming together and talking I would far rather have seen a negotiation starting and seen it all break down. That's not what we got. So yeah, that's another negative. So in the end, like I said, I'm sure I'm going to be upset many things in the future of this book, but there's stuff that I did enjoy about it now. So in the end, I don't really know how I felt about it. So let me know in the comments down below how you felt about this episode. I'm sorry, episode issue. I'm confusing YouTube and comics now, people. 
Uh, let me know how you felt about this issue in the comments down below. Also, if you want to see any of the other X-Men and Inhuman videos that I have made, they will be up at the end of this one. And if you like this video, then make sure that you share it around the web. And also, because YouTube decided to change its algorithm around, and now the way that videos get found is by the number of likes and comments that they have, make sure to give me a thumb up as well. Oh, YouTube, constantly trying to improve itself. Huh. Anywho, thank you for tuning in. Make sure that you follow me on Twitter, Twitch, Tumblr, all the T-words out there, at Professor Thorgy, and come back next time. Bye.